G'day guys, how's it going? My name's Sean, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, consider subscribing. What I do is I make tech videos, I do tutorials and the occasional review as well about products that I buy. Today's video is gonna be a comparison between OBS Studios and OBS Studio with Streamlabs and why I've switched and the benefits of, I guess, one versus the other. So let's begin. So before I jump into, I guess, uh, the pros and cons and showing you the differences between one and the other. Um, for context, I decided to switch to OBS with Streamlabs as it gives me, who is a beginner, a lot more, I guess, room to customize and tailor my stream and how it looks. It gives me the option for doing uh, donations. It gives me the options for gifts when people subscribe or like or um, follow me. Um, and it makes the stream look overall, I think, a lot more professional. So if you've seen streams on YouTube gaming or Twitch, and you're trying to get your stream to that level, then you should definitely check out OBS with Streamlabs. Okay, so what we're going to do is, or what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna give you a quick little guide on some of the features within Streamlabs and some of the features that you have access to. Um, so we'll just open it up here on the desktop. Now I've been using Streamlabs for a few weeks and I've gotta say I'm really impressed with all the features that you get access to considering it's a free piece of software. Um, there are in-app purchases available if you want to do that, if that's your thing and you know if there are some things that you really must have then I think spending a few dollars for that, I mean it's up to you but for the application itself and what you get to it, what you get with it sorry for free is, is really really good and if you've already been using OBS Studio for a while Streamlabs is essentially just taking on the OBS core application and just putting its own I guess layer over the top of it. So as you can see here, we're in the editor screen straight away. And this is currently what I have set up uh, for when I do my live streams. At the moment, there's a big black square here in the middle because I don't really feel like being on camera right now um, to do this voiceover. So we'll leave that blank, but you do have an option here in your sources down the bottom in the center to basically hide or unhide your webcam. So obviously for the sake of this tutorial, I've got it hidden. But starting from the beginning, if we go to the dashboard, one of the first things you'll see in the dashboard is, I guess, a summary of your account. And I mean, I don't mind showing you guys this because, you know, there's nothing really here that is, um, I guess, private, if you want to call it that much. I mean, you can see some donations, which I've got very little. But in order to get to this point, you will need to create an account with Streamlabs. So that's one of the sort of requirements that Streamlabs has to use the software is that you have to create an account with them. So to do that, we can just go ahead and I'll open a two new tab here and we'll go to Streamlabs. And signing up for a new account is really straightforward. Um, you can go ahead and you can sign up or log in with your Google account or your Twitch account, or you can use your YouTube account, Facebook, or you can use just like your email address if that's what you feel like doing. So I synchronize everything with my YouTube account. If you're streaming on Twitch, then you can do it with Twitch, um, whatever's easy for you. And once you've done that, then you'll get the same thing here within Streamlabs. When you open up the application, it'll ask you to log in, choose whichever account that you've used to log in with, and then you get these options here. So your dashboard will show you um, donations. And that's one of the real cool features that Streamlabs wants to share is that you can actually um, and easily set up a way for your viewers, your subscribers, followers to donate to you. Um, Streamlabs takes a small cut, obviously, for processing the donation, um, but it's really, really simple. I thought it was actually gonna be more complicated than what it was. So. You, in your dashboard you've got here donation settings and you can go ahead and you can link a few things so I've got people I've got a way that people can donate via PayPal um, and I've got a way that people can donate via credit card and depending on your country you know you might want to add on uh, Coinbase unit pay or Skrill if that's what you want but you know I think most common would be PayPal or credit cards and then I mean I had a donation from uh, a guy at Gear Seekers a few weeks ago and it was immediate. He donated a few dollars, went straight into my PayPal account. I can just 
withdraw that money if I want to, or I can just leave it in there as a as a balance and you know just build it up over time. Some of the other things that you can do within the application is you've got here some options for widgets, uh, community and growth. So you've got a chat bot function if you want to do chat within your live streams that will help sort of moderate and filter your chats. And you've got here a support section down the very bottom. Moving along to the next tab, which is the chat bot. Um, I don't necessarily use this at the moment very much, but depending on how big your stream is, that might be something that really appeals to you. You can have functions for uh, putting in com commands, um, moderator tools, um, so you can go ahead and you can essentially choose the preferences and customize it and modify it to your liking. There are, I know, a lot of features still coming soon. Um, so you might have seen up here song requests, mini games, counter. These are things that I think Twitch has at the moment, but Streamlabs is going to be sort of incorporating that over time. They haven't said when, I don't believe, um, but that will be coming soon to Streamlabs. Now, the third tab is themes. So themes is actually part of the reason why I got so excited about this application. So as you can see here, you've got all these examples of themes that people in the community have designed and put together and you can go ahead and essentially choose a theme um, which you know might suit your game that you're playing or if you know if you're doing in real life you can filter by category here it'll show you ones that are suitable for in real life streaming so maybe you don't not gaming but maybe you're doing um, I don't know, like a webinar or like a web episode or an interview or something like that or doing a live event, then maybe one of these would be better suited. So at the moment, I'm using the one here called Desert and I've just customized a few things, but overall I've left it pretty much the same. I'm not a graphic designer by any means and I'm not a, um, you know, a know it all when it comes to how to set up the best stream and do all that kind of stuff. But with these themes, it's taken the stream from looking basically just me and a webcam and the game to something a little bit more interesting and essentially all you need to do is if you find a stream so we'll just pick one here in the top left corner and all we need to do is click install overlay and that's it it goes straight into your um, I guess account it's stored and synced online with your account in the cloud so nothing gets saved to your computer so even if you move to another computer or you need to set up a second computer or a third computer with Streamlabs, all you do is sign into your account and all of your themes and settings automatically populate. You don't need to do anything at all as far as setting up. It's all synced with your account, which I think is just absolutely awesome. Especially if you're someone that streams on different computers, I think that's a real selling point and forget to back up things as well. Uh, you can choose and filter things by colors. So if you know you're all about green, you can choose ones that have got a green element. If you want to do ones that are red, you can go ahead and filter by red. It's really, really simple. You can also uh, search by trending. So there might be themes that seem to be really popular, like this one here from Apex. It looks really professional. I might actually steal that one. It looks really good. Um, you can just go ahead and click on the application or click on the theme and then click install and you can see how many people have installed it as well so i mean i guess there are some pros and cons with this kind of system is that you know some other streamers might have a similar look to yours um, and it might look a bit generic over time but you know it's really easy to chop and change your themes um, for each game or you know seasonal uh, every season you might want to change as well and then you've got your editor so like I said, I'm using the theme called Desert at the moment, and I've modified a few things. I've got my channel name up the very top here. I've got my top donators, uh, new donators, and new subscribers to my YouTube channel. So if you're a YouTuber, you can have your most recent subscribers here. If you're a Twitch person, you can have your most recent Twitch follower here. And then I've got a window here for the chat. So this is what a viewer will see when they're on their uh, when they're on your channel, when they're on your, your YouTube channel or your Twitch channel. Um, I've also got some options here for switching themes. So I switch themes, for example, I have this opening up on the screen for when it's about to start. I have this for when it's, you know, be right back time. And then I have a live gaming one as well. So 
again, you know, you can have multiple scenes and Streamlabs sort of just goes, yep, no worries. You click switch and it might take a second or two and then it's switched over and you can program to switch with hotkeys as well. You don't need to necessarily um, exit the game that you're in to switch scenes. On the very, very right hand side, you can see we've got the mixer. So you've got all your audio, media source, um, options, desktop audio, and you can go ahead and you can click the plus here in the middle and you can add even more options. So I've got here, let me switch back to my main theme. I've got here in my sources um, already an alert box, my webcam, live scene, all that kind of stuff. If I want to though, I can actually add some more widgets. So media share, if you've got a song that you want to share, you can do that. I've got one set up on my um, about to start, so that way I have some music playing while people are waiting. Um, a jar, if people want to you know, donate bits, they can do that. Um, so there's a whole bunch of extra stuff here. You can do window capture, video capture, game capture, display capture, browser source. So if you want to share a website, uh, you can do that. If you want to put an image in there, a custom image, maybe like your logo, or your brand, you can do that as well. So very, very similar to Streamlabs, almost identical actually. Um, but then it's just been sort of taken to the next level and tweaked a little bit by Streamlabs. So hopefully this little, I guess, tutorial or overview of Streamlabs with OBS um, it helps you decide on which application to use for streaming and yeah if you have any questions about this then um, hit me up and I'll see you in the next video cheers thanks for watching this video guys now you know a bit more about OBS versus OBS with Streamlabs if you like this video then chuck it a like if you didn't like it hit a dislike uh, if you have any questions hit me up in the comments down below and as always you can reach out to me on Facebook and Instagram as well so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.